Welcome to Night Shadows. I'm Stuart Best. Where the paranormal is normal. Where that which you thought you knew, you didn't. And where the future can be known, if you know exactly where to look. Well, good evening, everyone. Thanks for tuning in and listening. Uh, we got Larry on board tonight on his mountaintop under freezing rain. Uh, we had a beautiful day here in uh, sunshine, but it was cold. Uh, I want to talk, first of all, I think we should, uh, uh, to the passing of Billy Graham. And one of the reasons I want to do that is the uh, prophecies about when Billy Graham passed away, then the end would come. Yeah, we're going to talk about that. Hi, Larry. How are you doing? Hey, Stuart. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no problem. Uh, why don't we start with Billy Graham's age? It was 99, and this is interesting. He died in the year 5778, which adds up to 27, or a 999, or an inverted 666. Uh, also, if you add across the year that he died, 221, 2018 on our calendar, adds up to 16, which is love. And uh, God loves you is how Billy Graham closed almost all of his sermons. So it's kind of interesting how that all works together. I, I, I really do believe this is a warning, though, uh, to the church and to the world that things are going to change real fast. What do you think? I think you're accurate on that, Stuart. And, and what's ironic, too, I don't know if you got the check Drudge Report today, but it had three main posts on the top headlines uh, this morning. And it said, Billy Graham dead. And it said, spread gospel around the world. And then the third post headline was, uh, Trump team briefs Security Council on Mideast Peace Plan. Now, what's the odds that the pivot point we're at and the time frame we're in that suddenly Billy Graham passes away and uh, uh, the Trump team, uh, including Jared Kushner, briefs the U.N. Security Council on a Mideast peace plan? What That timing is an absolutely incredible. Well, that's it. And I think it definitely we are being told something, not only by the numbers, uh you know, Billy Graham uh, preached the gospel to the whole world. I could remember the global um, sermon he gave. They set it up, and he preached all over the world. Now, <clears throat> at the time, I was wondering, does this fulfill? You know, where Jesus said, to, first, the gospel has to be preached to all the world, and then the end will come. Well, it's exactly what Billy Graham did. He preached, uh, you know, his gospel, and uh, it was it's just very, very strange how all of this is coming together at that pivot point, like you were saying. Here we are just moving in, actually, to uh, 2018 or 5778. Of course, we've been in for a while uh, for the Hebrew year, and uh, that's that pivot year, 5777 to 5778. And uh, we're coming up on, uh, you know, the um, jubilees and, and 70th year for Israel being a, a nation. So this is kind of interesting. This is what they said, though. I got I got this in the mail. You can comment anywhere you want. Billy Graham's grandson has announced to the whole Christian world recently that his grandfather is about to be taken home by the Lord at any time already as he has grown weaker and weaker since giving his last message to America and the world. In fact, he said that God gave him the strength to give his last message, and after that withdrew the strength and sustaining power so that he could go home. There are, there have been two, in fact three, but two given by the same person at different time prophecies about Billy Graham's death through Maury Scal- now Scala. I, you know him, yeah, right? Ma- or or yeah, definitely Maurice, heard about him. That, yeah, that's Maurice Stellar. Okay. And he said once in 2005 in November, and then again in December 2011. And Benny Hinn, 
that after Billy Graham's going home, the judgment of the Gentile world will take place. So if Billy Graham is the last day's pattern of Masusala, and if the pattern holds true, and God is indeed repeating it again for the last days, which, of course, he said it would, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be again. And uh, Noah was told that when Methuselah died, it would come forth in that year. And Perry Stone did some research. I'm not sure where he's getting it from, but he said Methuselah died seven days before the flood took place. Now, I'm not sure if that is true or not, and I'm not sure where he got it from. But uh, that would be very, very interesting, because seven days after 221 is 228. Uh, that things could start to happen, if, if that is the way it's going to work. Anyway, he says, uh, when Billy Graham is taken home, the floods like Noah's day will take place in that same year. And uh, so anyway, another note, Perry Stone has mentioned in one of his teachings that the floods came seven days after Methuselah was dead because God allowed the seven days of mourning for the death of his servant just before he let it happen. Uh, That's kind of interesting, isn't it? That this could be somehow related back to the days of Noah and Masusala's death compared to Billy Graham's death. What do you think? I find that very interesting. And, and uh, you know, when you do hear things such as, uh, you know, uh, as the days of Noah, you have to reflect back a little bit to the days of Noah to wonder where we're going today. And at the same time, it seems like, uh, you know, the Creator does set precedence that a number of times he may do a similar things down through time, you know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, it almost sounds like this is one of those times. And I do remember Stan Dale uh, had a prophecy, either somebody told him that when he was in Australia, I think it was one of the elders of one of the tribes over there, that said that the Three Gorges Dam would be struck by a major earthquake, and that uh, then all of this stuff would start to happen. So this is very, very interesting. Uh, We're we're definitely closing in on the end. Here's another article on Graham's death marks the beginning of the greatest revival. This is another one. Uh, I don't know. I think it could trigger a revival. I'm not sure it's a true revival, but it would definitely uh, trigger a a lot. Uh, What do you think? I'm of the opinion that when the funeral is held, we're going to see some major world figures arrive. But I might be totally wrong. I mean, he's been known all over the world. Yeah, uh, matter of fact, Fox News today was was basically uh, carrying Billy Graham's death the way they would carry a prior president's death. I mean, it's 24-7. I mean, every show, uh, and, and, you know, showing the background over and over and over like they do a president that has passed away or a world leader. So uh, this funeral may be very, very interesting. And matter of fact, I don't know when they're going to have it, but uh, it'd be odd if it was seven days uh, from his death. Yeah, but then on there? the other hand, yeah, on the other hand, though, we you know we always have to be aware of the word delay, because just because seven days the, the first time, it doesn't mean a delay can't sit in there. You know, a lot of times, uh, you know, you know, things are done that are a little bit unpredictable. I mean, we've seen that over and over and over, and there are delays. Yes. And, and of course, oddly enough, I mean, we, we know about delays, but uh, could seven days mean seven years in our time? I mean, you know, you really just don't know. I'd love to see a Torah code on this. Yeah, I wonder if uh, Barry will do one on it. It would be good if he did. 
there, there's uh, there's something going on here. I mean, we've had we had the star sign on 923 last year. We had the total eclipse of the sun. We've got the jubilees, and we've got the uh, seventy t- uh, you know the seventy years, and all the numbers seem to match as I pointed out in the Omega Code. So we're definitely at a pivot point. And will there be any further delays? I guess that is the only question we have. Uh, but we are yeah, getting got... a convergence of all the signs now everywhere. Yeah, something that kind of struck me as you were talking there, and I'd like your opinion on it, even though it is uh, uh, actually, I guess you could say you'd have to presume something to, for it to be true. But if you'll remember this Mark Taylor that's been fairly accurate about Trump, Oddly enough, yes. Trump has completed one year. Now, Billy Graham just died. Trump gave him a really incredible treat today. And what, if, if by chance, would Trump have seven more years and the seven years after Methuselah died? You know, all of this is something we don't know how to put together. We can't connect it. But it is odd, the timing, the days, the numbers, and all that stuff right now. Yeah, it's it's either at the doorstep or there is going to be a considerable delay. And I think that has to, you know, we're either so close that we don't realize it. Or as, uh, you know, the Bible in many places has said there was going to be a delay, even the parable of the virgins. There was a delay and everybody fell asleep because of the length of the delay. Uh, the Dead Sea Scrolls said that the delay would be longer than any of the prophets, including that would be Jeremiah, Isaiah, Daniel, or any of them, could have conceived of, because God is so merciful, and he does not want to destroy the human race. But destroy it he will. And it's kind of interesting that uh, we had that preached all over the world by the by Billy Graham. He's an icon of the Christian church. There's no question about it. And uh, he was loved by, you know, just about everybody around the world and preached to the, uh, you know, presidents and world leaders when they wanted, you know, he was kind of a, what would you call him? Uh, Counselor, I guess, to many, many uh, leaders. So anyway... Uh, we have to sit, I guess, and wait and see where this is going to go. Don't be surprised, however, if judgment starts to fall uh, soon. And uh, anyway, any other comments you got on this passing? This is, I think, a major sign for everybody to do yeah, a heads up. Oh, I agree with you, and I, I'm really intrigued by the timing of it. Uh, you know, because I've been watching uh, Billy Graham, uh, you know, we watched two or three others, matter of fact, uh, you know, one in Israel, you know, the uh, general, uh, you know, that's in a coma still, I suppose. And, uh, yes, you know, there's a num- number of them that we have watched uh, that were prophetic, and Billy Graham was certainly one of those. And it's going to be interesting because, like I said, the timing of this on the very day he passed away is also the headline that the Trump team, which is Nikki Haley and Jared Kushner and uh, Jason Greenblatt and others, actually went to the U.N. Security Council and delivered a briefing about a Mideast peace plan. And I just say that that is so inclusive in the timing, you just can't make it up. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, they... in the background, they've been working on this for some time. And I know that the uh, the temple, not the temple grounds, we know where the temple's going, which will totally infuriate uh, the Islamic world, but the uh, embassy, embassy grounds are already yeah. there, are they not? Are they not ready for the building to oh, go yeah. up? Absolutely. Uh, not only are they ready, I've seen the location. It's staked out, and, and the construction, uh, I think, has actually begun quietly. And at the same time, a residence has already been given to Friedman, who is the uh, 
the ambassador in Jerusalem, a resident in Jerusalem, and he doesn't have to stay in Tel Aviv anymore. And so this is already, in, in a way, in progress. People just are not hearing about it. Yeah. Speaking about hearing about things, Iran warned it will level Tel Aviv to the ground if Israel attacks the Islamic Republic and threaten Netanyahu on a personal basis. The Secretary of Iran's Expediency Council, former chief of Iran's Revolutionary Guard, said the Islamic Republic will level Tel Aviv to the ground if Israel carries out an attack, far as news agency Iran's semi-official news site reported. The senior Iranian official made the statement Monday in response to Prime Minister Netanyahu's speech at Munich Security Council. What do you think of that? I mean, this rhetoric keeps on building, and they're going to rhetoric themselves into a corner where they have to strike? I'm, I'm not sure that it's going to be preventable. Anyway, uh, it, you know, at the same time, Netanyahu also has warned Iran that we will strike you directly. In other words, we're just not going to fight your proxies, you know, which is Gaza, the, the Strip, mm -hmm. uh, Lebanon, you know, Hezbollah in Lebanon, uh, you know, the Syrians, and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, he said we'll strike you, Iran, directly. And so the, the threats are there. I mean, it's just not... Uh, really slowing down. Uh, the only the only thing in the mix that is really strange to me is the fact that Soleimani, uh, and we know that's the uh, Revolutionary Guard Iranian general, the real famous one actually. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. You know he he has uh, talked to Hezbollah and the uh, Hamas and the Palestinians in Gaza, and told them to stop the missile attacks or or the probing. Uh, for the for the time being of Israel and its border, because of the fact he said that they are not able with just missiles alone to do this attack and survive it, and uh, he says uh, they're putting together a bigger plan. So you know, at the same time, you know, we've got the threats, but we've also got a lot of military movement. You know, really Lebanon and Iran, and and uh, you know, down you know in the Sinai and. And then mm -hmm. really all around Israel in all directions, you know, there is movement. Uh, uh, they're very concerned, too, Stuart, by the way, that uh, uh, somehow the Hezbollah forces were given uh, American military tanks out of Iraq. And oh. these tanks are in the possession, I think there's 11 of them, 9 or 11, something that figure, you know, that amount. And they're afraid that that is going to be used as a, an attack against the northern border, you know, of Israel. So this thing uh -huh. is really, uh, it's ramping up militarily, too, at the same time. And, of course, Israel must be on high alert for all this. They've been kind of on alert, well, for for a long time. Like Netanyahu said when somebody asked, well, who are your enemies? He said, everybody, <laughs> which is essentially the truth. Uh, they're being encircled, oh. just like the United States is being encircled. And uh, we're going to go down, and Israel is uh, going to go down, but they will come back up on a miraculous basis because you don't mess with the Lord when it comes to Jerusalem <laughs> so or Israel, for that matter. And uh, Jerusalem, the apple of his eye. So anybody that comes against there, even though he's going to allow uh, what is it, two thirds in Zechariah to be to perish in a massive war. So we're heading in that direction. You can just feel it with all the rhetoric that's going on. And like you said before, it doesn't seem like it's solvable. It seems like the Lord is just forcing this whole issue. And as far as Putin and Russia says, I will put hooks into your jaws and I will bring you forth against the mountains of Israel. So I've, I've always thought that I'd like your comment there. Do you think the hooks are the, uh, how do I word this, the covenants or the treaties that he has with all these uh, nations round about Israel that Putin would have to move and come down out, out there for if his uh, allies are attacked? 
And it seems, sounds to me like the United States is actually squaring off against Russia in Syria. Ultimately, that's behind it. What do you think? <clears throat> I have to lean a little bit, Stuart. Uh, the hooks in the jaw certainly could be treaties and, and allies, etc. But I have to lean a little bit into the area of energy, energy wars. Because yes. Syria, and of what a lot of people are not aware of, there's a lot of military spacing off in Syria, but they're facing off around oil fields and energy. And at the same time, uh, Russia, uh, you know, is working to uh, run, uh, you know, uh, energy sources through Syria and, and contain those things. Of course, what the area that the U.S. troops are in right now is an energy area, and Russia wants it. And, of course, Turkey wants it and is trying to get it right now. Turkey's invaded uh, and trying to uh, yes. grab the energy they can grab. Iran also is wanting the energy out of northern uh, uh, Iraq. And, and uh, of course, Turkey would like the Iraqi oil, too, and the Kurds want it. So I have to lean, Stuart, and I'd like your opinion on this. Uh, the hooks in the jaws may literally be the energy. Well, it could well be. Something occurs that brings Russia down. And if you look at the maps of proposed oil pipelines, et cetera, yeah. And as Stan Deo said, it, it appears that most of it is energy related. That we're fighting over what uh here we here we have these <laughs> this is odd, really. Uh, you know, with uh Dr. Greer and his disclosure project, uh and I think it's true that we have anti-gravity for a long time, Standeo has said so, and uh, we don't need any of this. Stephen Greer says we, we, if we could tap, and we can tap, zero-point energy, uh, we don't need any of this stuff, and yet we're still fighting over carbon-based uh, energy forms, which is ridiculous, but I guess that's the way it is. Here's another headline that's kind of interesting. North Korean officials insist that they will not give up nuclear weapons. And North Korea has only months away from the capability to strike the United States. Now, the reason I bring that up is there was a prophecy. Somebody sent me, and I couldn't find it, but it was just a couple of days ago. And the prophecy was that America will attack North Korea after the Olympic Games have closed down, and they will be successful. And because of that, Trump will get a much bigger head than he now has, which is pretty big. And uh, later on, I guess we go down. So anyway, that's kind of interesting that we would attack North Korea after the Olympic Games. And here's another headline, ICBM. This is interesting in view of that prophecy. ICBMs are being moved throughout the United States. Now, what do you think of that one? Those are kind of clues that something is coming. That yeah, it, it almost, what do you think? <laughs> yeah, it almost has to be, uh, you know, even as Israel recently has brought out missiles and actually has formed now a, a missile core. They have a, uh, a core uh, a military wing that has just uh, have brought out new missile technology and new missiles. And these missiles, these missiles have the capability of detecting a missile fired, even from Iran, you know, from Lebanon, mm -hmm. from Syria, anywhere it's fired from, and responding not only to knock down the uh, the one incoming, but also they have the missile technology to destroy the source no matter where the source is uh, wow. in the Middle East. So, so you know, could it be by chance that uh, we are really doing the same thing and, and we are aware of an attack that may occur, especially involving North Korea or when we actually do attack North Korea, if that prophetic word turns out to be true? Yeah. That, <laughs> <coughs> anyway, excuse me for coughing, folks. Still got a little bit of a cough. Okay, the school shooting. I wanted to get into this just a little bit. State Department 7277 says to disarm the American people, void the Second Amendment, 
and it's a U.S. Com- a U.N. Communist gun control. So now you're watching on major media. They want to try and curb the AR-15s and the AK-47 type assault, what they call assault rifles. And then, well, then they will move on to others. Now, remember Bill Cooper? He wrote a book on, I um, can't remember the name of it. But anyway, here's what he said in that book. The government encouraged the manufacture and importation of military firearms for criminals to use. This is intended to foster a feeling of insecurity, which would lead the American people to voluntarily disarm themselves by passing laws against firearms, using drugs and hypnosis on mental patients in a process that is called Orion, the CIA inculated, I guess that's how you pronounce it, the desire in these people to open fire on schoolyards and thus inflame the anti-gun lobby. This plan is well underway. And this, he wrote this back in 1991. And so far is working perfectly. The middle class is beginning or begging the government to do away with the Second Amendment. And, of course, they killed Cooper as you remember, but now they're saying this guy was on medications, he was hearing uh, voices. Uh, that sounds very much like MK Ultra. And you remember uh, Mel Gibson's conspiracy theory where Mel tried to warn the American people through that movie that MK Ultra actually is very, very real. What would you comment on that? Hello? Oh. Dirt, can you hear me? Yep, I got you back now. I got you back. I don't know what happened. I got thrown out of the queue, I guess. Uh, I was just completely shut down, and I had to start all over and come back in. Well, they don't like what we're talking about. That's about well, it. Probably not. Probably not. <laughs> anyway, uh, the gun control issue is definitely being played out, and they're working on the American people. Uh, I'll close out with this fast one and make a comment. So, uh, this is about Obama coming back into power. The man of sin will be revealed for who he really is, the beast. Mr. Obama, this is a prophecy, Mr. Obama will return in his new position as ruler. The streets will be filled with violence, civil unrest, and war. The weak will be murdered, unable to defend themselves. Children will murder their parents for what they have and take it from them. Your militia will be unable to keep or gain control. There will be riots and fires and no safe place. The unbelievers will rise to power. Behold, I come quickly. What do you think? Well, I have to say that I recently, some experts on Fox said the reason that the deep state and the the left and and, uh, all of those cannot allow in the investigations into Hillary Clinton is because it will dovetail right into Barack Obama, and since yep. possibly he is coming back, they can't allow it. Yep. I think this has all been planned, folks, and we're definitely at the end of things. And the passing of Billy Graham is a big, big uh, warning to everyone. So uh, people that have been kind of sitting on the fence – uh, well, maybe it's not a good idea to do that. You're either in or you're out as far as the Lord Jesus Christ is concerned. And it's nothing to fool with. Any last comment, Larry? Oh, just keep the, <laughs> keep the seat belt <laughs> buckled. Yeah, the winds are blowing stronger, it seems. So, uh, yeah, rough water ahead, a rough ride on the boat we're on. And uh, people, if you haven't stocked up and made plans, you better. Uh, This is going to get very, very nasty in the very near future. Anyway, I thank everybody for listening tonight, and we'll come back on Friday and do a longer show. And uh, take care, everyone, and uh, we'll be back Friday, the Lord willing. So good night, everyone.